Warrior Trading is the most popular YouTube page for stock trading. Its founder, Ross Cameron, is most well known for turning less than $600 into over 100,000. He posts his daily trading recaps here on YouTube, and if you watch them, you can clearly see that his power comes from these two scanners that he is always running, both of which being high of day momentum type scanners. From that point, his strategies are actually really simple. He's simply buying breakouts. He is buying strength and looking to sell higher. Now, I'm not saying he's not a genius trader in that his strategies aren't very good, but even he admits on this same page on his website that these scanners are the most valuable tools for a day trader. So I've done some very hardcore and in-depth research into these scanners to find out the exact metrics that Ross Cameron is scanning for. So in today's video, we are going to build the scanner that Ross Cameron uses every single morning to find and day trade these huge movers. There are a total of four metrics for this scanner. So actually not too complex of one. However, there is a major limitation within Thinkorswim in that the scan results only update every roughly three to five minutes. So the scan results won't be live updating. However, I know a major secret in Thinkorswim scanners that we can utilize to work around that. So make sure you stick around after the four metrics because you're gonna need that secret setup to make this scanner useful within Thinkorswim. Metric number one is very simple, price. He is only scanning for stocks trading at a minimum of $2 and a maximum of $20. It seems like he sort of wants to avoid the penny stock over the counter realm, but also not get into trading stocks that are too expensive. So here in our Thinkorswim scan tab, we are going to add a filter and we will add a stock filter. I'm going to select the stock filter drop down and I'm going to select close. As within Thinkorswim, close also represents the current price of an open candle. So of course, we're going to go with a minimum price of two and a maximum price of 20. Now, as I run this scanner, we will only see stocks which prices fall between these two values. Metric number two is that he only wants to return stocks that have a very low supply as due to the laws of supply and demand. If there is a low supply, it's going to take less demand or volume in the stock market space to move the price of that object. So he is scanning for stocks that have a total shares outstanding of less than 10 million. Luckily for us in Thinkorswim, we can do that as well. Once again, going to add filter, going to add a stock filter. This time we will go down to shares. And of course we will set the max to 10 million. One, two, three, one, two, three. As I now run this scanner, we're going to go from over 2,700 results down to just 785. And I'll actually turn on here the column for shares just so you can get a visual visualization of the fact that there are no stocks being returned on this scanner now that have a total shares outstanding balance greater than 10 million. For metrics number three and four, we're going to get into some chart setups required for a stock to be returned on this scanner. Simply metric number three is that the stock must already have a percent change greater than 10%. Only return to us stocks that are strong, right? We don't need to see if I go ahead and sort this descending, we don't have any reason to see all these weak stocks being returned on a scanner of this type. So what I'm gonna do, add filter stock, once again, come into the drop down and I will find the percent change at the bottom and very obviously set the minimum to 10%. As I now run this scanner, we go from 785 results all the way down to just 15. And as you can see from the percent change column, there are now no stocks being returned that are under a 10% gain on the day. Fourth metric is going to be a little bit more tricky to set up within Thinkorswim, but it can be done and I'll hold your hand at every step along the way. Warrior Trading, Ross Cameron, should I say, wants the stocks on this scanner to have high relative volume. As I talk about a lot when building my own strategies and scanners on this channel, 
high relative volume gives validity to the strength of a move it increases the likelihood chance that the breakout move is real and likely to continue so what ross cameron scans for is a 5x relative volume the volume today must be 5x greater than the relative volume of the stock so to set this up we are going to once again come into add filter but this time we are going to come into a study filter rather than a stock one and then we are going to click into this pencil icon and head on over into the ThinkScript editor in which we're going to do a little bit of custom coding within Thinkorswim to set this up. If you didn't know that was possible within Thinkorswim, it is an extremely powerful tool, especially to be offered in a free trading software like this that allows you to obviously pull data into scripting code and to build out conditions like the one we're about to build. So pretty simply, the volume of today's bar, which we can call that data by simply typing in volume, must be greater than the average volume over the last X number of bars back. Luckily for us, Thinkorswim has an existing study for average volume that all we need to do is reference that study in our line of code here. The study is called volume AVG. Since we are referencing a study, we need to open and close parentheses. What volume AVG does is it's taking the average volume over the last 50 bars. That is the only parameter this study exists is the length of bars back. I'm just going to leave it to the default 50 bars. So the current volume must be greater than the average volume over the last 50 bars. I'm going to offset that by one by putting a one inside of brackets so that the current volume isn't trying to compare with the average volume of today, rather offset that from what the average volume was yesterday. And then I'm going to, of course, multiply the volume average by five. So at the end of all this, just quickly wrap it up. Today's volume greater than the average volume over the last 50 bars offset by one multiplied by five. And of course, we are running this on the daily time aggregation. Okay, and scan. We are now from the thousands and thousands of results we started with down to just three tickers, which is what you want. That's good for a scanner. Just show me a finite list of exactly the kind of stocks that are matching my setup. Stock number one on the list is GPUs. We can go over and take a look at the five minute chart of GPUs and see it is performing very, very well today. This is definitely a stock that you would like to have on a day trading watch list. If I bounce out to the daily real quick, just to show you the volume, which actually isn't showing. For some reason, I'm getting an error message on this chart that the volume is hidden as some bars in it are equal to zero. I, I don't know. I've never seen that before. Let's come back out to the scanner. Let's look at another stock in SYS, just so I can show you the visualization that yes, in fact, on the daily chart, these stocks are trading much heavier volume than the average relative volume before it. Now, the limitation within Thinkorswim is that the scan results, so the actual tickers that show in the results below your scanner, only update every roughly three to five minutes. It is not a real-time updating process. I assume Thinkorswim does that to relieve the load on their servers. First off, you can come back in and run the scan manually. You can do that like every roughly 30 seconds, but there's an even better workaround to that so that the stocks will be immediately ordered in real time based on the strength of the tickers on the list. What we're going to do is we're going to come into this tiny cog to the far right of our scan result headers, and we're going to come into customize. This is where you can typically turn on a bunch of different uh, columns to sort the data by. What we need to do is we need to create, once again, using custom thinkorswim code, a custom column so that we can find which stocks are the strongest. To do this in your lookup here, you're gonna type in custom. You can click on any of the scroll icons that exist. Since the scroll icon exists without a lock on it, that means that you can hop into the ThinkScript editor and you can change this code. 
Once again, ridiculously useful feature for a free tool like Thinkorswim. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build out the percent change equation and I want to find the percent difference from the current price from high of day. So to do that, actually very simple. The percent change equation is new minus original all divided by original. Then of course, we'll multiply that value by 100 to make it a percent. So our new value is the current price of the ticker, which once again, within thinkorswim is represented by close. Our original value is high of day. Since we are running this on the daily time aggregation, which is signified here at the top of our field, all we need to do is reference high. That's it, new minus original. Let's go ahead and wrap this equation in parentheses so that the entire thing gets divided once again by the original, which is once again high. Let's wrap this entire equation in parentheses so that the entire thing is multiplied by 100 to make it that percent value. Obviously, make sure you then add the custom column to your results. And now we can sort top down by this and I can see which stocks are the closest to high of day. So if any of the stocks on this scan begin spiking, begin going to and through high of day, you will know about it immediately because as you may notice in this custom column, unfortunately, I always end up recording these videos like at lunch so the stocks aren't as volatile, but you will notice a little bit of change in the uh, percentages here. The data in the columns of the scan results is live updating. So unlike the scan results themselves, which takes three to five minutes, making use of data in these columns is very powerful. So if any of these stocks begin to spike, you will know about it in real time. So I can see here that apparently GPUs is about 7% off its high of day, making it the number one stock on the list for right now. If we come into the five minutes, we can see the current price and to the high of day is about 7.84%. Looks to be working as expected. In SYS, actually, look, good example, just spiked up above GPUs, just went to now only being 5.5% away from its high of day. If we go look at, was it in SYS? Yeah, in SYS, then we do have, in fact, a line from the current price to its high of day, which is at about 5.25%. So the next step so that you can make this scanner just extremely easy to run and to keep an eye on all day while you are trading is to come into this middle hamburger icon here and save the scan query. I have already named mine warrior trading hot stocks. I will go ahead and save it as such. Then back within your charts tab, what you're going to do is you're going to click on this small little arrow on the far left and within one of your watch list gadgets, if you don't have a watch list gadget for some reason, you can click this plus button at the bottom and add one. But within one of your watch list gadgets here, you will simply left click on the name of the watch list and go find in your personal what you just saved it as. I saved mine as Warrior Trading Hot Stocks. Of course, that is what I will run it as here. Then in your watch list, you obviously want to once again, turn on that custom column so that whenever any of these stocks get strong, get a push, break into high of day, you know about it right away. So you're gonna come into customize and obviously make sure you turn on whatever you named that custom column we created on the previous page and sort ascending top down by that. Now, what you want to do, there is a little link icon here. You want to make sure to set this up to any of the colors. Then within your chart or wherever you would like to send these codes to, there is also a link tab. And if you get the idea, obviously, if the watch list link and the chart link are the same, when you click on any of the stocks from the watch list, they automatically get sent to that chart. So say GPUs after the lunch hour here gets another push, breaks up through 850, starts to run. I would know about it immediately. It would jump to the top of my list. This custom column would start to show like only 1% down or 0% down from high of day. I can quickly then go bang, click on it, jump into it, see what's going on, and hopefully look 
to get some profitable trades out of it. And one more think or swim quality of life hack here as it pertains to scanners. Remember I said there is a sort of annoying limitation within think or swim scanners that the stock results only update every three to five minutes. Well, rather than like having to go back and manually run the scan, see if anything new was added or sort of always having to be keeping an eye on your scanner to see if anything new was added, what you can do is once again, left click on the name of the scanner you are running and scroll down here, alert when scan results change. Now you can set up an alert event to whenever a symbol is added to the Warrior Trading's hot stock scanner, I will be alerted an alert will trigger as I hit create here since I just made this alert you will see what the alert looks like because it's going to tell us hey three stocks have been added to the list ah there it is took a second three stocks have been added to the list oh oh I think I have my sounds muted sorry but there's a little like bell sound that goes off as well so that is nice but now you can see over in our market watch tab and in our alerts this status is still active for a symbol being added to scan results to the warrior trading's hot stock. So now if something is added, I will hear that alert again. You can right click on this alert and you can go to alert notifications and you can either not have it play a sound. You can change what sound it plays. You can have it send you emails. You can have it send you text messages to do that. And I know I'm ranting a little bit, but all this is important for those of you that want to know to do that. You have to go to set up in the top right application settings. And from your notifications, you have to add your email or your phone number if you want to set up your alerts in that way. If you're interested in this sort of custom coding within Thinkorswim, well, the scanner and scan column from today's video have already been published over on my website, daytradingstrategies.net. They exist alongside over 150 other custom coded scanners, studies, even trade strategies, etc. And you get access to all of them for one low price. You can either sign up for a monthly plan or an annual plan. Obviously, the annual plan is going to save you money, else what would be the point? But even more important with the annual plan, you get lifetime access to a Discord server, which is reserved for only people that are also utilizing thinkorswim code. So it's a great place to talk about and discuss what you find is working best for you. So check out the website. I also have a free codes page over there just so you can see some examples and get an idea of how easy it is to get them imported into your own thinkorswim. If you need help getting set up, there is a link at the bottom of the free page for you to learn how to import the codes. Anyway, daytradingstrategies.net linked in the description down below. Go read the reviews, at least check out and get access to the free codes. I mean, why not? And if you like what you see, consider signing up and becoming a better trader today. You all now have access to a very, very similar scanner that Ross Cameron uses every single morning. And we built it all. I showcased to you all the code for completely free in today's video. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed and if you learned something. If you would like to continue learning, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel down below as well. With all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and sign out of today's video. I'll catch you all in the next one.